first things first, first things first, we're going to uh, attach the air. This all will come on. Unless the air is attached, it's just the normal shop air from the ceiling. Um, at this point, we want to make sure that the, the breaker is set to on so that the saw will actually actuate. Um, next, we, we know it's on because of the green light yeah. right there. The green light, we just want to double check um, that the emergency stop is off. And that will also release the pneumatics. Uh, before we start to set up and cut, we want to double check that the motor is off or the blade is off. Um, that will allow us to run through the pneumatic settings and make sure that we aren't burying the blade into the saw. Um, to do that, we're going to initially ensure that the coolant is off. You don't need to be running coolant for what we're doing. And that will be controlled here. Um, at this point, you could hit the pedal and the saw should go through the motions. Hitting that pedal, and we'll, you can tell that the saw is going out, obviously. What we're checking for here is that the saw does not bottom out and hit the, hit the base of the saw. It looks like we're good. Um, Where's the adjustment for the, the speed? The adjustment for the speed is this purple knob. And if you just look, look closely, um, you, the, the plus and the minus signs. Closing will slow it down, opening it will speed it up. So we we'll, can run through those motions real quick. You can see the effect. The question is how fast, how slow to go. Slower is better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close it all the way at this point so when I turn it on it doesn't move. But then I can, I can turn it counterclockwise and it will speed it up. That's too fast. Let me show you what's good as far as speed. That's about how fast you want to go right there. Okay. Let's come over to the side of the machine. This adjustment right here is the triggering mechanism that allows the saw to come back up and just will go down. It's set by these screws right here. And if you were to back it all of this down quite a ways, what would happen is that once you hit the pedal, and this is very useful because it will allow you to keep the saw down in the, the down position, which will confirm whether or not we're actually bottoming out the saw without the blade running. And so we can verify that's not too low. The height of the saw is set by this screw right over here, okay? Uh -huh. See that? So if the saw hits the, the base, just adjust it with this screw. Okay. okay, so still looking over here, what we want to do is type raise by turning it, um, well it depends on your perspective, if you're looking down, it's counterclockwise, we'll raise this uh, nut until a point where it actuates these switches and it'll back the saw off. So just keep turning until the pneumatics kick in. There you go. Okay, so at this point, you're gonna find the next click, okay? And then you're gonna go 180 degrees once more. And that just ensures that it's always going to engage. All right, so um, as far as the next step, this is the, um, the means in which you repeat cuts. It's just a saw and stop. Um, it's good to always double check this about every three cuts because the vibration of this saw will make it such that this screw might come loose or this wasn't tightened down all the way. So every three cuts is a good just double check. Um, this saw is set up to just repeat the same cut over and over and over. Um, okay, let's talk about the vise real quick. This saw is set up such that, like I said, you can do a hundred of the same cuts. Well, part of that, part of that is um, you don't have to like completely always every time be doing this. 
right? So what you want to do is you want to put your part in there and, and get it snug, and then back it out just a little bit so that you can slide your part in and out, okay? All right, because what happens is once the pneumatics engage, one of the first things it does is it actually does that final little bit of clamping. Um, so this is just for ease of repeatability. One important um, note, thing to note is when cutting any sort of angle, never cut angle when it's in this orientation. Okay, you want to always cut it so that the peak of the angle is pointing up. You'll break the blade otherwise. Um, let's see. You'll know if the blade is dull because it'll produce a lot of these leftover pieces here. A, a sharp blade ideally will not leave any sort of burrs. Okay. Um, I think you can try to get four blades because of sharpening so that uh, Daniel can swap out um, as required and you can have two out each semester getting sharpened and you'll have two in the shop to, to swap out. Okay, so um, Let's see, Michael, what am I forgetting here? Uh, doing an oh, angle cut. Coolant. Oh, yeah, so an angle cut, thank you. On an angle cut, this is your, your means to actuate whether it's going to go rotate or not. So you can, let's see, pull the back of the saw. There's really no good place to grab onto this, so we grab the base of the saw over here and turn. I can't remember which way is loose. I think that's loose there. And then you just pull like that. So you might have to brace, brace yourself with your, your left leg up against the saw and then rotate it. And eventually what will happen is you guys will have this bolted to the floor so it doesn't want to move and it'll be easier to adjust. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, how to find 45 and how to find 90. What I like to do is uh, make it such that the blade's not running, okay, turn the blade off, come back over here and tell the saw to stay in the down position by lowering this. It's easy to remember if this is down farther, it's going to stay down. If this is up in its right spot, the saw will go up. Okay, so what we need, um, Lance, can you grab me a square? Can you a square? You'll take a square and you'll notice that these are 45 degree angles here. And uh, to get a 90, you can take a machinist square, which, sorry, uh, an adjustable machinist square. <laughs> an adjustable machinist square, this is where editing helps. Um, adjustable machinist square, you'll take the ruler part off. Okay, so you'll take this ruler part off and just have this part. Don't lose this, by the way. Or, um, and you'll, you'll use the 45 part of the machinist square to basically fine tune it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actuate the saw so it goes into the down position. It's coming down, coming down. And once it stops, obviously with the blade not running, that's kind of a no-brainer, you can see that we're not quite 90 degrees, okay? So you can see that. All right, so what we're going to do is this helps to have a friend help you with this, but okay, kind of just get it into place, kick it into place, just like that. All right, so that's how you adjust for 90. You can do a similar um, trick for uh, 45, um, just using the other you know, reorienting this, this particular piece to get to your 45. Okay. But don't forget to lock the saw, and then when you're done, you'll come back over and then tighten the screw on the back side, just like so, until you trigger that switch, the limit switch. These are called limit switches. Okay. And then you'll do one, an, an additional 180 degrees. Okay, so really uh, that's 
that's all there is to it, I think, before one walks away from a machine like this and including the drill press. You hit the emergency saw, and at that point, you could go home. I mean, you got to disengage the shop air, obviously, but that's, that's the nuts and bolts of this machine. Great.